Hey guys, Greg here from Lens Pro to Go, and today I'm here with Evan and Mandy, and we're going to show you guys how to do some three point lighting setups. Today we're using the Flex Cine panels from Westcott. We have a 1x1, one one, a 1x2, one and an ice light on three man photo light stands. In this video, we're going to show you guys how to make something that looks like this into something that looks like this, or even this. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to turn off all the lights. If you have windows, you'll want to block those out so we can start with a clean slate. So once we've turned off our lights, the first thing we're going to do is bring in our key light, which we are using the 1x2 flex and we have the soft box attached to it. So I'm going to have Evan move it in a little bit closer just so we can get some nice soft light coming across the face. And then I'm going to have him dim it down because as you can see on her face, it's a little bit bright. Coming so down. I'll just have him bring that down and I'm going to check my waveforms. 60% lower. Keep going lower. Right about there. And then the next step we're going to do is we're going to turn it sideways so you can see that shadow on her face. We're going to try and get rid of that by turning the light vertical. As you can see it clears that up right on her neck. But the problem we run into with this is now we're seeing some light in her glasses. So I'm going to have Evan lift up the light to get that out a little bit more. A little bit more. Right there. So now that we've got the key light set, what we're going to do is we're going to have Evan bring in the bounce and we're using a foam core with a duck bill and Evan will talk a little more about some other options. Yeah, so I mean, we're using this as a fill light right now to kind of fill in some of the shadows. You could upgrade to a four light kit and use another flex panel or something for this, but if you're on a little more of a budget, you can get foam boards like this from Home Depot for like $8. Um, and then we're using a duckbill clamp, but you can use anything that will hold foam, um, you know, little grip clamps or anything. And you can even, you know, if you go get some poster board at Walmart or go pick up anything white that will reflect light, a um, shower curtain or a bed sheet, there's a million different ways that you could rig this up. The point is really just that we're trying to bounce some of our key light back in to fill these shadows. Um, and then the last thing we're going to do is we're going to turn on our rim light, which we're using the ice light on a flex arm just so we can get a good position on it. And he's going to move that around. We're going to check to make sure it's not too bright on our hair and it actually looks pretty good. Um, let's just let's dim it down and brighten it up just so we can see what that looks like. So this is all the way up and then we can bring it down. This is all the way down. All the way down. Okay, bring it up a little bit. That, that's probably good right there just so we get a little bit of separation from her in the background. So now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to throw a light on the back wall. Uh, so we have the one by one flex light, which is also in this kit of lights. Um, and he's just going to turn that on on the back there. And this is all the way up. Okay. And we can bring it down. Here's half. Here's half. Okay. And then this is all the way down. Okay, let's go back to about half. I think that looked pretty good. You're getting some nice gradation, so it's coming, starting bright right behind her, and then it's spreading out a little bit. And this is just laying on the ground, shooting up at the wall right now. Yeah, that looks good right there. Come back a couple inches. Right there. That looks pretty good. So we're getting rid of that hot spot around her arm on both sides, and then you're getting a nice gradient out. Okay, so now that we're done with our first look, which is looking really good, we're going to go to something that's a little bit more creative and we're going to start mixing color temperatures. So Evan's going to take over for this and walk you through a little bit of the thought process behind what he's doing. Okay, so for our second look, um, one of the first things we're going to do, because we're trying to create a slightly more dramatic look, we already moved the key a tiny bit to be more of a side light, but we're going to dial that in. Um, but our first step is actually going to be moving the camera because lighting is all relative to um, which way the camera is facing and where your talent's facing. And so one of the things that I tend to do when we're going for a more dramatic look is to come into a little more of a profile shot with our talent, um, as well as um, sometimes we'll actually short side the interview. So maybe this is a sad story of Mandy talking about um, how she ran away from home when she was younger or something. And so since it's a sad story, instead of doing a traditional interview frame, which might be something like this, we're actually going to pull her over to the short side of the frame here so that she's kind of looking against the, 
the right wall. And we've got the camera up a little higher than it was, so we're looking down a little bit. And we've also zoomed in a little bit to where we're now at probably about a 60 millimeter uh, focal length on this 24 to 70. So I'm pretty happy with that um, composition. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're actually going to take our white balance on the camera here and we're gonna pull it down to about 5,000 Kelvin from 6,000 Kelvin. And that's going to cool our whole image down a little bit. Um, so we wanna play with mixing color temperatures. And the first thing we're gonna do is take the two by one, which is our key light, and we're gonna bring the color temperature of that down to 3,200 Kelvin. And so that's a more orange light. It's like a tungsten light that you'd find in your house. And so you can immediately see that obviously it is a lot more orange than it was before. So I'm pretty happy with that. Greg, can we walk that in like a step maybe? Um, and that'll just kind of soften it up a little bit. Can we try bringing it around the front a tiny bit? And we'll go back a little more with it and take another half step back. So what, we're, what you're gonna see here is that the shadows on her face are changing, but the background's changing too, because as we turn that way, we're spilling more onto the background and it's brightening up. Whereas if we come more off axis like that, we're getting a darker background. So I like it right about there. So let's try that. So then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the one by one um, flex panel and we're gonna turn that on as sort of a rim light on the same side as our key. And so that's going to be at around 5,600 Kelvin again, I think. What are we at now, Greg? Uh, we were at 6,000 at 75%. Okay, let's go to 6,000 at about 50%. So as he brings that back 50? down, let's bring it down a little more. We're just kind of... 40. Okay, let's bring it down to about 25. 25. Okay, cool. And now can we actually AB that? Just power swap it? Yep. So as you can see, what we're doing is we're adding this little kick of light to the right side of her face that's just kind of adding a little extra texture. We can leave that on. That looks pretty good. I like that. Um, and then can we try to just bring it in like another six inches? Cool. Let's bring it back a little bit. We're getting a little bit of a flare there, so we're going to fix the flare by pulling it out, and that's a good spot to be. Okay, so I'm happy with that. So now we've got kind of this soft wrapping light from our 2x1 Westcott Flex, which is at 3200 Kelvin. Um, our 1x1 one one Westcott Flex is functioning as a rim light at 6,000 Kelvin, and our camera is white balanced at 5,000 Kelvin. So we're kind of splitting the difference, which makes the uh, daylight source seem more blue and makes the tungsten source seem more orange. So the last thing we're going to do is take our ice light and we're going to just put a little bit of kind of a fill rim in on this other side. So let's start getting that in there. Okay, that looks pretty okay. Can we back it up a little bit? So this is one of those kind of subtle touches. Can we bring it down about three notches uh, as far as like output? There we go that it's not gonna do a lot. We're really gonna try and, it, a lot of the times interview lighting is about very subtle tweaks. Um, so let's turn that off and turn it on again. And as you can see, it's just a tiny little kiss of light on her hair and neck. And then can we see if we kind of fan that off? I think it might be spilling a tiny bit on the background. No, we're not really getting anything on, on the background. Okay, cool, we're good. So there's just that tiny little last bit of light that we're getting on her neck and hair. And so this is built out of the same three lights that we were using for our other setup, but by switching our composition to be a little tighter, to be a short-sighted interview, um, by switching our color temperature, so instead of everything being correct and white, we have a little orange and blue going on. And then um, by allowing a little more shadow and contrast on this side of her face, we're creating a more dramatic look for our more sad story sort of thing. And that's really, with any of these looks, it's all about picking the right look for your story. And so if you're doing um, corporate interviews or an announcement video or something, you might want the first look. And if you're doing something that's a little more dramatic, you might want the second look. But it's really just about picking the right look for the job. Um, and thankfully, with this three light kit, you can make a bunch of different looks and really uh, do what you need for any number of different jobs. So the first two setups assume that you have a window that you can close or lights you can turn off. We're going to do this last setup with windows that we can't close and just build off of that. 
So yeah, so for this look, we're kind of doing something similar to our first setup. So it's a clean, uh, bright interview look. And we have obviously this window that's giving us a lot of daylight. And in the last setup, we were able to you know, black out all our windows or we just had kind of a clean slate of room. But when you have natural daylight, this is kind of what we're building off of. So before we were setting our two by one as our key light, but now we're going to use our two by one as a fill and use the window as our key light. So we've kind of positioned Mandy at a 45 degree angle here to our uh, window so that it's giving us a nice key here and kind of crossing over her face. So now if Greg pops on our two by one, you can see as that comes in, we're filling in this shadow side. And we can actually bring that down a little bit. So it's a cloudy day right now, so we don't have a ton of light coming through on this side. Um, we bring that up a tiny bit more. And I'm gonna pop this up, and that looks good right about there. So we've got the camera at 6,000 Kelvin, and we've got both of our Westcott panels at 6,000 Kelvin. So we've filled in the shadow side of Mandy's face using our two by one flex. Now we're gonna turn on the one by one flex, which we're using as a hair light and rim. And we can actually pull that down a little bit as well to dial that back. Where are we at there? 50%. 50%. So 50% looks pretty good. Um, and so we're going to really quickly show you again. That's with both of them on. Now if we kill our fill and kill the rim, that's how it looks with just our window. And then as we pop these back on one by one, you can kind of see the difference that they're making here. And so really you just have to um, take a look at the amount of light you have coming in through your window, set your exposure off of that, and then balance your fill and rim lights off of that window. Because obviously you don't have a dimmer on the sun, unfortunately. We all wish we did, but we have to kind of go off that. And this is how we were able to get a really similar look uh, using two lights and some natural sunlight coming through a window. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys learned a lot in this video. And I want to say thanks again to Evan and Mandy for coming out and showing us these lighting setups. If you want to see the full list of gear, check in the description below or head on over to our website. Thanks.